Oh God. <laughs> hey Bethany family, good evening. We are back. It is the 530 crew. We have the whole team here today, and we are so excited to be joining you guys tonight on tonight's evening. You know, it's Monday, it's 5:30. You know, got a little nice weather going on. You know, I'm so excited for tomorrow's weather. It's gonna be spectacular, they said. So I can't yeah. wait. If you want to know where you guys are tuning in from right now? What's the weather like? Um, where you're at, you know, let us know. It is time for the recap. As you know, we come every Monday and we recap the amazing word that we are blessed with um, and taught each and every Sunday from Bishop David G. Evans. You know, he is continuing the series, uh, Chestnut Checkers. And listen, this sermon this weekend, it rocked with my, it rocked with my mindset. It, it, it had me all, all up here. So I cannot wait to dive in and discuss it with you. But before you Dive and before we dive into anything, I want you guys to come on in and make sure that you are sharing. Press that share button as well as that like button, as well as that comment button. We want to hear from you guys, so let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you're gonna let someone know that we're joining, add them in the comments right now, as well as um, you know, just saying hey, right? Um, before as we're letting people come in and share and everything, let me do my famous, famous, famous introductions. Um, up at the top, we have my partner in crime who's being extra safe right now. You know, Rev Rich already told her, listen, be safe. But she is on the, she's recap on the road today. I'm the recap <laughs> <you> <laughs> <today>. <laughs> <The> Des, <laughs> who also dropped some nuggets and some knowledge earlier today on Maximize Monday. So I encourage you guys to go back and watch that. You know, we're on this health kit and you know, I, I dropped in there a couple minutes and dropped my little two cents. And just to say, I did get my French fries and my salad, but it was a balance. It was a, <laughs> it was a balance. Next to Sister Des, we have Rev Rich. You know, he is our uh, the wise one of the group. He drops the gems and, you know, he makes sure that if we need prayer, he's there for us for prayer. Well, you know? They need prayer today, y'all. I'm not going to say why, but <laughs> both Kevin and, and Antoine need prayer. Um, but good to see y'all. Missed y'all last week. <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> and then under Rev Rich, we have our social media director who does it all so gracefully, uh, Sister Maya Labu, Minister Labu. Hey she wants to drop them nuggets, right? <laughs> and then next to her, everyone in the comments, I need y'all to get ready and get uh, the Deacon Antoine Bokeem. <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can catch him on emergent worship. You can catch him here. You can catch him on Men's Safe House Ministry. You know, we are so grateful for Deacon uh, McGee. And if you guys do not know, I am Brother Kevin, and we are the Recap Family. But you know, I, I'm just seeing everyone in the comments right now. Uh, Sister Ava, I was just asking. Ava, hey, I was like, yeah. I haven't seen Ava in a while. Um, What's up, Ava? Happy to see you, Sister Ava, Sister Sandra, Sister Helen, uh, Brother Nicholas, uh, CT BB in Berlin, City baby, baby. Okay, um, <laughs> who else we have? Here? <laughs> I see Ava did the McGee. See, I love yeah, her. So, I so it. Is back. She's back, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Let us know where you guys are tuning in from. And as you guys are, you know, tuning in and doing all that, I'm going to ask the panel how they're feeling today as I go and share the broadcast myself. Because if I don't do it now, I'm going to forget. I just did it myself. <laughs> so how are you guys feeling it. today as I, you know, go on social media and see what's going on? It was good. It's a beautiful day out. I'm glad that the warmer weather is finally starting to catch up with us a bit. Yeah. Although I heard uh, we're supposed to be heading back into winter for yes. the end of the week. Mm. But all I know is a good day. How about for you guys? I guess I should watch the weather channel. Oh, <laughs> all yeah. is well. All is well. Don't worry. Summer is on the way. Spring is here. Summer is coming. Mm -hmm. Wait, you said that we're getting winter again? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to get really cold. cold. Mm -hmm. On Thursday? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So we get all nice. this nice weather on Tuesday, and then it just gets cold on Thursday. But you know that's April for you. April is that month you get all yeah, the rain. It's, it's it's that up and down month. But you know we are mm -hmm. grateful to be on and just seeing everyone. Uh, Helen, I see you're tuning in from uh, Maryland. <laughs> hey, Keefe. Oh, I'm sorry, Keefe. I didn't see you in the comments. Hey, Keefe. Keefe. Um, yeah, forget Keefe. I know. I totally forgot. I'm so sorry, Keefe. Keefe's in the comments as well. He's another 
uh, the comment king. You know, we got Ava and Keefe in the comments. Um, but let me share this. But no, um, we're just so happy you guys are just tuning in with us. It's always a blessing, like I say, each and every week. Um, you guys are what make the broadcast so special because you get up here and you fellowship with us and you conversate with us and you let us know how you guys are feeling as well. So as we go throughout the broadcast, we want to hear from you guys if there are any comments or any questions that you have about this Sunday sermon. Like I said, we are still in this Chestnut Checker series and this week has just been, whew, this this weekend, this sermon this weekend, I'm telling you, has played with my mindset right now. But um, we want to hear from you guys as well. So make sure that you are sharing, you're retweeting, you're starting a watch party, and you're letting someone know that we're on today and that we are going to be talking about, um, you know, this weekend sermon, right? So mm -hmm. let's just dive right into it because there's so much to digest. There's so much to, you know, layer, take the layers off of, right? So Bishop, you know, he's, he continued in this Chestnut Checker series and he titled this sermon in particular, Strongholds. Yeah. Now, before we get into anything, um, I think strongholds, I'm not even going to say think, I know that that's one of the topics like that always comes up because I always talk about how we had these strongholds in our lives, right? So when Bishop like basically broke it down the way he did it as we go into um, today's recap, it it just blew my like it just blew my whole my whole thinking my whole mindset right so bishop yeah. out of the book of second corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 and bishop stated that god himself is identified as a stronghold a high tower and a place of safety there are, then there are strongholds connected to the demonic to evil thinking and evil spirits so we have to understand the difference in the strongholds which is the good stronghold of God and the evil stronghold of the enemy. When we mm -hmm. understand this, if you have any doubt, you have an active enemy. You are not in denial because in order to be in denial, a thing has to be real to you. You're not in denial because denial is only possible in the face of something real. The Holy Spirit declares in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, that we are actively involved in two dimensions of life. Those two dimensions are natural and spiritual. Our battles are realized and seen in the flesh. So physical battles are very real, but every battle that we fight in the flesh must be won in the spirit for us to have the victory that we desire. Our real battles, those that really matter, have their basis, their foundation, and victory in the spirit of God. We are uniquely created as human beings to represent the kingdom of God on earth. Mm -hmm. Like I always ask before we get anywhere, I always like asking you guys, what are your thoughts on this additional component to the Chestnut Checker series? I see you, Sister uh, Keisha. Hey, Keisha. So what are your hey, thoughts, Keisha. guys, about this, this additional layer to, you know, this Chestnut Checker series? Mm. Um. One, uh, as always, it's always very good, very good. Um, I think the, the main thing was, for me, was where strongholds really lie. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we think strongholds are, you know, external or, or things like that. But where Bishop talked about how it resides in our, our mindsets and, you know, it was just like, whoa. This is where, you know, the strongest foothold of the enemy is in the mind. So it was, it was dead on. Again, as I as I've been saying since he started the series, he's building up to take us somewhere. So yeah, most definitely, most definitely, I like that. I like that. Oh, let's see. You're on mute, uh, he, Rev. He he's certainly taken us somewhere with this. Um, and to 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 start with the mind and and watch how we build from the mind because from the mind, you know, a whole lot of things can happen. A whole lot of things can happen. So I, I'm looking forward to his exegesis of the continuation of this, uh, yeah. this foundation that he has laid for us. Cause it's, I got a little sneak peek. It's going to be good. Uh -oh. It's always good, but it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited too. It always amazes me how strong our minds are, how powerful it is. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great that Bishop is touching on this now um, and allowing us to see what the strongholds are in our own lives so that we can, you know, continue to move forward and to heal from them. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I'm excited for, for this message and all that is to come. Oh. And when you know, we talk, we've we talked previously, when you know your enemy, even if that enemy is within you, when you at least know it, can identify it, right. can assess it, you can uh -huh. then do something about it. Exactly. You know, you walking around like it's not there and it's there. Mm -hmm. um, then you don't, you, you don't have any control over it. But when you have, can identify it and be real with that identification, it gives yeah. you the power back. Right. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Uh, Sister Daz, would you like to add to that your thoughts of this week's sermon? Sorry, I muted you guys so that you didn't hear all the wind and things. Going. You're cool. Um, no, I, you know, we always get taught like how things start in our minds. You know, like everything that we do starts in our hearts and minds. So the fact that this is exactly what his sermon is touching on and beginning with it, it makes perfect sense. So, yeah. Just waiting for it to develop. All right, I like that. I like that. Can, can I read from the comments of what oh, uh, Sandra said? She says that I love the breakdowns to the root of the strongholds, acknowledgement of the real issues in order to be healed. Mm, I like that. Thank you, Sandra. And that is so true. You know, um, I think for me, I think that's what really stood out to me as well as how Bishop broke it down of how strongholds are developed and, you know, how, you know, we always think it's the, you know, the enemy that creates them. But as we get into it, you know, we kind of leave that doorway open for him to come in and to develop those things. Right. So it's it's about, you know, I think we always have that problem when we do that self-assessment. And for me, I'll just say for myself, I feel like this was a self-assessment for myself because, um, you know, there are certain areas in our lives that we do have strongholds holds on. And it, it shows God that, you know, breaking it down, the stronghold is just basically something that's holding you strong and something that you're like looking at more or valuing more than God. So, you know, it definitely was a self-assessment for me. Um, and it's about, you know, being accountable for our actions and for decisions that we made, you know? So that's why I feel like this, this sermon in particular is really like <laughs> stick it out to me. Right. So, um, when unbelief steps in Satan targets two kinds of people, Satan does not attack spiritually and mentally balanced people. He normally attacks those that are skeptical and those that are superstitious. They are the primary targets of the enemy of your soul. Bishop stated that you cannot cast out the flesh and you cannot disciple the de demonic. Bondage is demonic influence. And Bishop says that a child of God cannot be possessed by evil, but a child of God can be influenced by evil. Possession for a non-believer can certainly happen. Influence for a believer actually does happen. A Christian can be in bondage in certain areas of their lives, which illustrated, which is illustrated in John chapter 10, right? So um, what are your thoughts on Christians being in bondage in certain areas of their lives? Well, we all are, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we taught a class a few years ago. It was a men's class, but it fit for everybody. They talked about that thing. Everybody has that thing. Whatever that thing is, your thing is different than my thing, is different than Deke's thing, is different from my or Des's thing. But we all have that thing and 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 we you know, Jesus came to set us free from that thing. You know, he wants us to be free from that thing. Anything that prohibits the full revelation, illumination of the Lord in our lives. He wants that to go away. He wants that to go away. So we have to be mindful of whatever that thing is in our individual lives and not uh, and not let that block what God would have otherwise have us to be able to see. Because some of the vision is blocked by that thing. You know, some of the provision is blocked by that thing, even though he's never going to not provide for us. But some of the doors 
that could be open or blocked by that thing. And and it's just about, you know, being obedient to the word, right? It's just about being obedient to the word. And it's not, it's not, it's, it, it's nothing to be ashamed about because we all have it. So, you know, it's not like <laughs> you better than me or I'm better than you. We all got it. It's just, right. it's just a different thing. Right. You know? No, that's true. That's true. Uh, Sister Mike, do you can answer? You, she's muted. Yeah. You're mute, Mike. She's probably <laughs> asking you to repeat the question. I missed the first part of the question. Can you repeat it again? Of course. I said, what are your thoughts on Christians being in bondage in certain areas of their lives? Hmm. You want me to go so you can think? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I would just say it comes from, and we talked about it already, it comes from acknowledgement. You know, knowing that, as Rev said, we all have that thing about us, and then are we enjoying it more than our love for God? Do we love that thing more than we love our God? Because... Right. For instance, if, you know, that thing for me would be lying and I'm like, God, I need to stop lying. I need to stop lying. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. How many more times are am I going to am I going to pray that prayer before I do something to change it? Right. You know, am I really going to submit? Here we go. Am I really going to submit my tongue to the Lord? Am I really going to have him work on the real root issue of what the lying part is? You know, you lie to get ahead. You lie to get out of things. You lie to manipulate and to deceive. So then you have to look at the root of why you're doing that thing. Mm -hmm. and submit to God and say, okay, God, this is what it is. This is the real reason why I'm going through this. Can you help me? Will you help me? And the Holy Ghost is sitting right there, probably jumping up and down like, yo, let's do it. I've been waiting for this long for you to get this right. Because as Rev said, if we don't do this, we don't experience the fullness of it all. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that are held back, you know, because that thing, there's a thing, that thing self-sabotages. It self-sabotages. So you could be getting ready to walk through a great door and then that thing show up and you scare to the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to really, really be really self-aware of what that thing is. And then love God more than that thing so that that bondage could be gone because it exists in everybody. You know, salvation is a progressive work. So, mm -hmm. right. know. yeah. No, I agree. I think being self-aware and acknowledging it is very important. Uh, but I think there's also the element of denial and how that in itself is a stronghold because you don't want to be looked at as being less than or not a good Christian or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And I think that sometimes people can get caught up in that. There's a lot of, they, there's a lot of pressure, right? Mm -hmm. So no, I think definitely um, it just even acknowledging that, that this is something that makes me uncomfortable to share or, you know, to talk about with other people. Cause we all, like you said, Rev, like we all have something that is a challenge or a struggle. And I think that if we're able to acknowledge that in each other and community wise, build each other up um, to do better in the kingdom, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there is power in, in, in that and in being able to say, I am flawed, mm -hmm. but I'm a child of God. That's and right. This is, you know what I'm saying? That's right. No, that's real. That is real. Yeah, I was about to say, like, you said something really interesting, you know, being a good Christian. Mm -hmm. What is a good Christian? Exactly. <laughs> like, why are we so fixated on this good Christian? Thing? So I think it's that whole perspective of being a good Christian. So can we just like dive into that? Because there may be someone right now that's watching that's like, is there a, a image of what a good Christian is? And to be honest, there's not a good image. There's not an image of what a good Christian is, right? Like. Mm -hmm. I feel like that yeah, yeah. perspective is what really drives people like, oh my gosh, like that may drive them away from Christ or may drive them away from church because they feel like they have to fit a certain way or they have to do a certain thing. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? But mm -hmm. but we have, yeah, we, we, we really need to understand that um, we are all God's children. 
whether we have children or have been children or will have children, the children aren't going to do things right all the time. Right. That love that you have for them will never diminish. Like mm -hmm. Bishop has said 20 years ago, child could be an ax murder. That mama said, that's my baby boy. You know, <laughs> so, so we have to embrace the fact, the reality that we are God's children. Yes. We're going to make mistakes. We have to, under good Christian, get back to this. I know I'm weak and but strong with God. I know I can do mm -hmm. all things. I know, you know, I, I, I know these truths that he's put in the Bible, but we have to, we have to know that we're enough as we are. God right. doesn't love us because of what we did. He doesn't love us because we do the recap. He doesn't mm -hmm. love us because he leads the praise team or because Maya's doing all this behind the scenes stuff with Kev's out front. He doesn't love us because of none of that. He loves us just the way we are. And we okay. got to get over ourselves in his yep. love for us. Amen. It's not God, it's us. He yep. loves us exactly the way we are mm -hmm. because the blood covers all that stuff. Come on. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up in a minute, but you know that's 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 real. <laughs> we, have, we we have to we have to get over ourselves in this thing mm -hmm. because he loves us the way we are. We have to accept that, mm -hmm. yeah. and then strive to do better. It's always interesting to me how we seek that validation in all the wrong places, whether it be on social media, mm -hmm. our peers, wherever, mm -hmm. you know. It should be an up down relationship instead of outward in terms of, you know, that validation yep. of I am good enough or whatever. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you, ain't got none, you ain't got nothing for us, D? I was going to say, nah, man, you. He's he going to say no, but then he's nah, going to spew out all Look, this. You ain't got nothing else for us? <laughs> good, bro. You did it. You did it. All right. It. Well, I got, I, I got another piece then. So because we're so good, the reason why we have to get over ourselves, y'all, mm -hmm. is because as Bishop said, and I don't know now if it was in the leadership class on Friday night and Thursday or if it was Sunday, but he said, we are the salt. We are the light. Mm -hmm. We're not, yeah, we don't Friday. have the salt. Mm -hmm. We don't have the light, but we are it. But if we're so concerned about how bad we are, or how unworthy mm -hmm. we are, we can't be that salt. We can't be that light to help other folks who have similar, you know, uh, issues, maybe different, but they still have their thing right. to come to the light for them to be right. salt. You know, we have to be able to get over that so we can let God use us and be that salt and be that light to do what he has commissioned us to do. Mm, 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 mm. That's good. Mm, mm. That's good. <laughs> Why are y'all waiting for me? Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Listen. <laughs> I, I got an image in my head. Because uh, when he said light, it just I just thought about the, you know, you know how it's a cloudy day, but the sun is still present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Light shines regardless of what's surrounding you. Mm -hmm. No matter so how dark if it is. We, if we are supposed to be that light, we're still supposed to shine. No matter what is going on. You're supposed to walk in the light and be the light. And that whole salt thing that Bishop talked about, um, you know, make sure that we're preserving things and mm -hmm. changing things and doing things that we're supposed to do, because that is a sign of being a, a son of God, a child of God. That's a sign of being a Christian is being the light in darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk into a room, things should get a little brighter. <laughs> you know, when you when you talk, things should change and people should feel different because it's not you. It's, you know, it's the God in you that's bringing forth that change. OK. Mm -hmm. All right. OK. <laughs> so there are two <laughs> words for possess in the word of God. So first thing we understand is that we have to leave in. Um, that we have to leave an opening for the enemy to have the opportunity to enter, such as going to see a palm reader or reading the horoscope every day. So two words for possess are number one, ownership, and the second meaning is mastery over or influence. So the word possess in the Bible has two definitions, which are ownership and influence or mastery over. Jesus can set you free, which he has to because bondage requires deception. When one is deceived, it requires the intervention of Jesus to overcome that deception, and he overcomes it with the truth and the spirit of God. 
in order for a child of God to have any bondages in their lives at all, there must be an opening and the saint must provide the opening. So panel, I wanted to I want to discuss how we provide the opening for the enemy to have that opportunity to enter. Mm. Well, I think we kind of talked about it already, but um I would say the the main the major way of the opening is allowing um allowing doors to stay open. Mm-hmm. So, you know, doorways to your mind. So for instance, if you just, and this is just very simple. If you think to yourself that you are, you're less than, Mm -hmm. you know, when let's say, for example, you're in a a conversation with somebody and you're like, I just feel less than that person. I just feel like I don't measure up to that individual. You have then allowed something to come out of your mouth to leave the Mm -hmm. door open for insecurity. Mm. So then now the enemy is like, Oh, there it is. Let me, throw this little arrow in here, dink. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna send such and such over here to whisper this in their ear. Because mm-hmm. again, it's not always him directly coming. You know, he has minions and he'll send whoever, whatever spirit that may be to say, okay, you know, continue to pour into them that they're not, uh, they're that they're not measuring up to what other people are doing instead of being uniquely themselves. And then that's where we get into these deep insecurity issues. Because sometimes not always what someone said to us is what we're saying to ourselves. Yep. So that that is one of the, the most practical ways that I can think about um, how we leave the door open. There's several others, you know, that lead to different mm-hmm. things. Uh, but yeah, that's one. Mm-hmm. No, that, that's what I was thinking too. Like we've said it before about how powerful our words are. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes when we say things is because they're closer to our hearts, right? So I feel like that definitely uh, does the words that we say, the negativity we have towards ourselves, you know, definitely opens the door for it to grow and to fester. And if it's left unchecked before you know it, like you're far off the deep end and you're having these like deep emotional, you know, traumas. Yeah, because yeah. you're you you spoke these things into in, into existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Rev Rich, <laughs> I, I, I think I think they 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 knocked that one out. So <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. So <laughs> so the enemy enters like a thief in an area left open or set up so that he can set up shop and begin to build a stronghold not around you but in your mind. According to Corinthians chapter 10, the strongholds are in our thoughts. We know this warfare is real because Jesus fought these battles in the Bible and he fought them to demonstrate the authority given to the children of God in the Holy Ghost. We have been given the enemy too much credit, mental time, and emotional investment. Jesus teaches us that Satan is defeated now, which means that he has no authority over you as a believer and you have authority over him. The enemy's greatest weapon is temptation and not authority. He has to tempt you to disobey God because he cannot force you to. But we learn that once the enemy enters, he starts to build a stronghold in our mind, which means strongholds are in our thoughts. How should we adjust our thought process when it comes to our relationship with God and our growth? Because as we're learning that, you know, these strongholds are in our thoughts. So like we just said, you know, those insecurities, these, those words that we speak and everything. So going forward into this new year, into this year of restoration, um, reversal and revival, how should we revive those thought processes that we have, you know, going into this new year? Speak the truth. Oh, okay. um, that's the easiest way that I can think of it. You know, you speak the truth. You know, the same thing um, Jesus did when the devil came to tempt him in the desert, mm-hmm. uh, in the wilderness. He, you know, the devil asked his question was, "If you are the Son of God." So he was coming at what Jesus, what the Son of God would do, mm-hmm. and coming at the mindset of Jesus. If you are the son of God, do this. 
because the son of God should be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so I, that's what it was implying. So Jesus was like, I could do that, but these are, this is the truth of what I really do because this is what the, my father says. So I would go in that same route that if you are dealing with areas in your life where you're battling in your mind concerning something that is, whether it be insecurity, whether it be, you know, um, all the things that Bishop listed in, in those, uh, those areas, I don't want to go through them all. Um, whatever year it is, mm -hmm. start speaking the truth to it. Mm -hmm. and let it dissipate because the power, the word of God is the power of God on earth. And it allows you to start breaking things down and repeating it over and over and over and over to yourself till you get to a point where you have confidence mm -hmm. and you're no longer in that area anymore, you know, cause he desires for you to move. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you do is by speaking what you need to speak. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like what Ava said, speak life into yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sister Maya, I add to that? No, no, I, I, I like that. I agree with that. I think I one of the reasons why I love that example that Deacon Antoine gave is because Jesus was like, look, I got nothing to prove. I, I know who I am. So he just lived by that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that we all can identify with is feeling we have to prove ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just speak your truth, you know? So definitely like Deacon Antoine said, like how Ava said, like, speak it. Yeah. And I also see some good um, from CT and from Sandra. Can we post those? Yes. Yeah, so city baby. <laughs> 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 you really have to know yourself and pray for deliverance in those areas. Note your area you need to work on. I like that. And then Sandra says, protect through God's word, put on the whole armor, armor of God and learning to cast down every imagination that exalts itself against the word of God. I like that. I like that. I love you, Mama Bill. <laughs> we talk. I need I need some more egg rolls. We gotta talk. So listen the egg rolls are good. <laughs> Rev Rich, being you know in the leadership position that you are in at our church, um, you know, what is some advice that you would give someone? You know, Deacon Antoine and Sister Maya gave some great advice as well as um in the comments, but coming from a leadership leadership standpoint, um what are some things that we should do to revive our thought processes going into this year? That, that's, um, that's a good one. And, you know, being that we've been in this pandemic for almost 13 months now, or 13 months now, a little over 13 yeah. months now, that what you'll find is uh, a couple different groups of folks, right? Those folks who have stayed to themselves, have left their minds to themselves, Yes. and not being able to embrace the change that God is looking for. Then you have those other side of the folks that have been like a sponge and even though they can't get to the house, they're reading instead of watching, being at one service, looking at multiple services on Sunday, they're reading, they're studying. And while they won't be together physically, they're reaching out and hearing from other folks. It's kind of like, um, you know, when you get dressed up to go out somewhere, you get fixed up to show up where with God, he just wants us like the man with the withered hand and not to, not to sh just to show up and then to get fixed. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't get fixed and show up. We have to sh show up to let him fix us. And so as we're in this year, you've been showing up, keep showing up. Mm -hmm. if, you haven't, if you haven't been showing up, start showing up. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to let this thing, you know, get inside of you and, and, and we can't do it by ourselves. Right. But it's just not it's just not meant to work that way. Right. Um, that we can fix this thing, that we can get all that God has for us by just us sitting and talking to him. Now, certainly are there are there seasons in folks' lives where they have to be by themselves, you know, and they've been by themselves, and there's nothing they can do about the situation. Yes. But we're providing this church is providing so many vehicles through which people can connect. And, and learn and ask questions, whether it's on this platform or all the other platforms that we have, whether it's through writing in the social at GoToMedia, uh, GoToBethany.com, whether it's joining the Connections Church, utilize the vehicles and the tools that God has given you so that when you come out of this thing, you know, another thing that Bishop told us over the weekend, if, if, if we come out of this thing, the same church, if we come out of this thing, 
the same ministries that we're in, if we coming out of this thing, the same people that we are, when we went in, we done missed the whole revelation and transformation mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we should be a better church, a better ministry, a better person. All those things should be manifest, but we got to show up. Yeah. We got to show up, you know? That's so uh, true. More so that's, that's, that's what I would say. Uh, yeah, and that's so good. And from, from what I'm taking from that is that, you know, we got to get outside of ourselves. You know, we, yeah. have, we have to do that part. You know, everything is laid down there for us. So go after it. Like Rev Rich said, you know, there's so much content that's provided throughout the week, you know, for you to stay connected, right? And, you know, for me, each year, I always say to myself, you know, um, what are some new expectations for myself? What do I want to get out of this year? Because I don't want to be the same that I was last year. And that's the same thing with us within this pandemic. You know, like you said, when, when we come out of it, we should not be the same. You know, our our ministry should be stronger. Our social content should be stronger. Everything should be stronger. So it's about that personal growth. So, you know, we just got to get out of our own way. And that's why I say going back to what I said in the beginning, I felt like this was a self-assessment for me because we we set a, we leave different areas in our life set up for the enemy to come up and, you know, get in our head and everything. But it's like you have control of that. It's just that reassuring factor that you have control of all of that, you mm -hmm. know. He does not have the authority of what you do. So it goes back to that self-assessment, right? Anybody else? That's right. That? No, that's good, man. Good? Okay. That's really good. So Second Corinthians chapter 10 reveals the key in the word the stronghold. A stronghold is something that holds us strong. It is a fortress that can only be defeated by the word and the Holy Spirit. Our fears, rejections, low self-esteem, and challenges in life are fed by our imagination. In addition, we tend to add to what we don't know. What people don't know, they will create. With that being said, we have created things in our own minds, even when we did not know. The strongholds are outside of us, are not outside of us, excuse me. They are in our thoughts, and in our thoughts are connected to our hearts. Thoughts are where the enemy builds a stronghold. So Bishop stated that our fears, rejections, uh, low self-esteem, and challenges in life are fed by our imagination. Why do you think we continue to in entertain these thoughts um, if they are no good for us? Continue to have these thoughts. Why do we continue to entertain um, our imagination if it's not good for us? It seems like it's a constant battle that we always, you know, deal with. So what would you say contributes to us not getting outside of ourselves, not getting outside of our thought processes, not getting outside of our thoughts and our imagination and just saying, hey, if it's not good for me, perfect example, like um, the low self-esteem, you know, if you're being mm -hmm. fed, like if you're going to a church that's feeding you constantly, constantly, there may be someone that still battles with that. Mm -hmm. So. What do you think contributes to that? Why do we continue to enter, entertain those thoughts? Um, I would say some of it is because we haven't been properly taught. Um, and others is, for lack of better words, um, not not wanting to do be different or do something different. Um, and then we have the other third that want to change, but just struggle with it, you know, over and over again. Um, and again, as I say, you know, you got to submit yourself to the Lord and into this process. Give yourself grace as you're going through it. You know, get into community with people who will speak life over you who will show you, you know, that there is a better way of living this thing out, staying in the word, um, really, really lean on the Holy Ghost uh, because he's, he's an amazing, <laughs> amazing gift uh, for transformation, especially when you don't know what you're doing or how to move about this thing, you know, mm -hmm. connect with leadership, have conversations. You know, yeah. you may, you may need a little bit of therapy too. Ain't nothing wrong with Jesus therapy. <laughs> um, you need to sit on somebody's couch, you know? and, and it's the truth, you know. It's just the real reality. And that's okay, in. and it's okay. Yeah. You know, I had a conversation with somebody about that last night. You know, they were like feeling ashamed, like, 
He was like, yeah, I got to go see a counselor, man. My, my mind's not right. He's like, and I think my mind should be better because I'm saved. I said, that's not a guarantee. I said, because there's some things that are deeply rooted that God will use a therapist. That's why that is created. That's why a therapist exists to help you through this process as you read your word and rely on it. So um, that's one of the things. And then, you know, as Bishop said, it's a stronghold. And we may not even know it's a stronghold. We may not even know that there's something uh, that is built up so strong in our minds to the to the point of where, okay, here we go. I don't know if you ever found somebody that's hard to love. Like it's hard mm. to love them. Like they won't let you in. Like as you're pouring into them, as you're, you know, showing them that you care and that you want to be there for them. And then next thing you know, every time you show them kindness and goodness, they fight you on it or they retract from it because there's something in their mind that says, I'm not worthy of love. Wow. And then you have to figure out how are you are you going to let me in to this? Because I heard people say, oh, I got to tear my walls down. I got so many walls. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you got to tear them down because there's something trying to get in there to help transform you. Yeah. So as we said before, be self-aware. There's some practical ways to do this thing. Community, you know, submitting yourself to God, submitting yourself to leadership, getting some therapy, um, you know, doing all these different things, you know, write, get get an outlet so you can start pouring things out. Stuff that you can't tell to man, write it on paper and tell it to God and allow, you know, those practical things to really, really help you. I like that. And everybody's so different, right? Um, we all get fed, you know, differently. Um, so you have to find that vehicle, you know, whether it's any of the vehicles that 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 uh, that Deke talked about, or some other vehicle. As long as it's not hurting you or somebody else, um, uh, the right the right type of vehicle. Um, you know, and anytime there's change, there's going any, and we have to be willing to go through the process. Sometimes folks aren't willing to go. It's just more comfortable to stay in bondage. Yeah. Right. So, you know, we could be if you form a new team, there's this thing called um, forming, norming, storming, performing. Right. So you got to you got to form. Then you got to kind of get normalized. Then you get through some storms before you really can start performing. Mm -hmm. And and individually we have to go through the similar process when we have these parts of bondage but first as we've talked about at the beginning it's it's in our mind that we go from this i wish i want to i'm willing i will you don't go mm -hmm. from wish to will you go from wish to i want to to i'm willing and then i will and by the mm -hmm. time you get to the will you're ready to let that thing go, but you have to go through the process. And we're always looking for this instantaneous, particularly in the in the in the society we live in today. This instantaneous. It took you, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years to get into it. You ain't getting it out in the, you ain't getting it out in them in a month, 30 days, 60 days a year. It's going, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it takes time. And when I say not get out of it, that doesn't mean you'll be in bondage to it, but that thing will rise up. That thing will that that you'll think is gone and it's like hello how you doing you know and so you have to understand that that there's a process to letting go and sometimes it's just more comfortable to keep it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true, Sister Mai. <laughs> no, I mean, I think Rev pretty much uh, <laughs> summed it up. I was, gonna, I was gonna say the short answer was I don't know, mm -hmm. but I think really like a lot has to do with comfortability and there is comfort even if it's not comfortable mm -hmm. there is comfort in being in that same situation that you've been in mm -hmm. um and also i want to say there is a tension in it too like when and i don't have that's the right, right words but that's right when you are saying oh there's something wrong with me blah 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 that's garnering attention that you are searching for right so I think mm. that might come into play in, into things as well. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. That was good. That was good. That was good. I have no comment. No comment. Obviously, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Just saying. 
<laughs> Just saying. So a stronghold is whatever you trust in other than God. A stronghold is a hiding place for a thought, meaning a safe place to hide for the evil or the demonic thought that you may have had. According to the text, the demonic hides in the thought patterns of people that reveals their personal anchor of their soul. In other words, that they trust in something other than God. Their stronghold is letting God know that you're trusting in something other than him. So what are your thoughts on a stronghold being a hiding place for a thought, meaning a safe place to hide for the evil or demonic thought that you may have had? <laughs> What's um, up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I had the same reaction when I was like, I just have to ask it. <laughs> okay, ask it one more time. So what are your thoughts on a stronghold being a hiding place for a thought, meaning a safe place to hide from for the evil or the demonic thought that you may have had? Honestly, I don't, uh, it's the first time I really have nothing to say. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, I think the comments. We don't see your comments too. Yeah, Go ahead. I, I I would say um, for the most part though um, that it does make sense that you know these negative things, these negative emotions and, and, and uh, feelings that we may have and thoughts do dwell deep in the mind. You know, um, when they dwell deep. You know, when we speak of mind, of course, we're, we're talking about your, you know, your will, your heart, you know, your, your emotions. It, it buries deep in the, into that area yeah. um, because sometimes you don't even know it until someone's knocking at you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know for me, one of the, when I was battling through a struggle, it was my mine was uh, feeling secure in who I was. You know, when I first started doing this leadership work, mm. it's like, yeah, that's not me. You know, I'm good. And then noticing, okay, it, it, this is me. Mm. You know, this is this is something that, okay, God, all right, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> and having, having to then open the door to run out of it and run into God. So then that stronghold could be knocked down um, and allow God to do his work in that area. So, you know, it is it is deep. You know, it takes time, as Rev said, there's a process to a stronghold falling. We read it in the book of Joshua. You know, the one stronghold that fell, it took seven days mm -hmm. because they had to walk around it mm -hmm. <laughs> and then shout and it fell. But, you know, we're not going to get into any of that. But that is, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the things that I, I think it's, it's real. It's a place that we have to really acknowledge um, yeah. and just be careful. Be really, really careful. And mm -hmm. is it just me, or was it like it's like scary to like say it like that? Like, cause it's like, Dad, you you know, it it's kind of like when you look at it like that, that it's a you know, it's a safe place to hide the evil and demonic thought that you may have had. It's just like scary, like Dad, that's true. Like to me, it it was just it was freaky to me. Like I'm just like when you think about it, and you break it down. It's just like wow. Like I had that demonic thought. I had that like in my process, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. It was just, it was weird to me. Like, wow, this is so true, but it's also scary that I had mm -hmm. that thought. Can you, can you sit, repeat the question one more time? Of course. Real. Um, what are your thoughts on a stronghold being a hiding place for a thought, meaning a safe place to hide the evil or the mnemonic thought that you may have had? Okay. You know, um, that's a, that's that I'm going to answer this. And, and this has been my experience. Um, you know, thoughts are going to come and, and when they come, you kind of have to let them come and let them go. Um, cause sometimes when you try to fight them, they, they, they come back even stronger. You know, there's the thing like, like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And but it but it came, but you let it come and let it go, not and not let it come and stay, or let it come and act like it wasn't there, but let it come and let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This is why you're the reverend. This is exactly yeah. why you are the reverend. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sister Ma. <laughs> I think it's tough because now it's tough because uh, some strongholds can come out of deep trauma. Something happened to you as a kid and it's hard to overcome. And you know, I, I agree with everything that was said. Let it come and let it go. You know, there's a quote that says something like life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's that strategicness that we need to consider. And yes, this is something, this is a card that I've been dealt. I need to change how I react to it. Not saying that it's easy because it's not, but I think it's 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 almost a coping mechanism to um, let those. Say your question again. Um, um, <laughs> I want to say it like how you said it. No, what are your thoughts on a stronghold being a hiding place for a yeah. thought, meaning that it's a safe place to hide the evil or demonic thoughts that you may have had? Yeah, I think it's easier when we have those thoughts of this is what happened to me, it's easier to hide in it being a stronghold instead of facing it head on and saying, okay, this is something, this is an area that I need to work on and get help in. I like that. I like that. That makes so, sense. No, it does make sense. It's, it's, it's good. No, it does. It's just, it's one of those, for me, it was just like, it's one of those topics where it's just like, wow. Like, so I just wanted to get your perspective. So that's a, that's a deep one. It is. Deep, it is. Bishop is definitely shaking up some mindsets where he, he already mm -hmm. shook up. So. You're wrong. You're wrong for it. You can skip it. It's okay. So thoughts are the hiding place for evil. And when those thoughts get entrance, they build a stronghold that must be brought down by the word of God and by the spirit of God. The door is open because there are four groups of sin that we have to overcome. The first group is moral, moral. The second group is religious. The third group is social. And the fourth one is a lack of self-control. All these begin in the thoughts and manifest in, in the life of human beings. In addition, all these lead to doors being open and giving the enemy the opportunity to gain entrance. All the doors and windows left open for the thief to come in. They are. They are all gateways for demonic activity in a believer's life. Trust is the focus of the Lord, and it's a violation of creation not to trust one who is worthy of trust. So like I always say, guys, um, this is just a little, 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 little piece of what we're fed each Sunday. Um, and as you guys can see, Bishop, he did say in the sermon that he's going to dive deeper into this going into the next two weeks. So um, I'm excited to see what he has to share with us. This just right here, just these coming up with these questions and just reiterating them um, was difficult because, you know, it is, it is a, it's a tough topic, as Sister Maya said, is a deep uh, rooted topic. So um, we want to definitely thank you guys for, you know, your comments and your questions. But something in particular that we definitely want to do is, uh, Sister Keisha, we did um, see that um, you are asking for prayer uh, for your mother. And, you know, we know that as we get closer to these uh, these months, such as, you know, May when it's Mother's Day and then Father's Day, you know, it's difficult for some. So before I ask Deacon Antoine to pray for you right now, I do want to encourage you to please go back and watch our Sound Mind panels that uh, focus around dealing with grief and stuff like that. Um, it was a great discussion um, that, you know, we displayed on those panels. Um, and, you know, we want you to go back and watch them. I'm sure that mm -hmm. it be, um, some healing within um, the discussion. OK, mm -hmm. so. If you could, I want to say one more thing because the sound mind panels, you know, great conversation on that. But also prior to the pandemic, Bishop did a whole sermon series yes. uh, called Your Heart Will Beat Again that is yes. focused on that grieving process yes. and how to not necessarily overcome it because you never get, you know, past the loss of a loved one, right. but how to heal from it. So yeah. definitely check that out as well. So Deacon Antoine, if you could um, 
Absolutely. Father, we thank you for just this moment, this opportunity to come before you uh, to pray and to intercede for our sister Keisha. Uh, we don't know exactly what she's going through. Uh, she said it's been 10 years, but it could feel like 10 seconds. It could feel like 10 minutes. It could feel like 10 days uh, that her mother has transitioned to be with you. We ask you, Lord, to be that comfort that you said you would be. Uh, as she's going through, as she's grieving, as she's mourning, God, help to remind her of the good things, the good times uh, that she shared with her mother. Help. We want you, God, to be her mother in this instance. Fill that hole, fill that void. Uh, Holy Spirit, that sweet comforter that you are, just rest upon our sister right now. Uh, give her strength in the name of Jesus. Uh, give her endurance to keep going and not to fall into depression and not to fall into sadness. Um, surround her with people who will uplift her in the name of Jesus. Uh, also, Father, we ask you to give her peace of mind, allow her to rest, allow her to not dwell on the fact of the absence, but dwell on the fact that her, she will see her mother again when it's time for you to meet her face to face. This is the hope that we have, that one day we will see everyone again, that one day we will stand before you and we will no longer experience death, no mourning, no weeping, but we will experience the joy that is in your presence. So now, Father, we just ask that you wrap your arms around her, love on her like never before, like you've never done before, and give her that peace that surpasses all understanding. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Deep. Um, again, guys, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. But, you know, before we go anywhere, I always love telling you what's going on here. I would say around the plaza, but, you know, around the plaza virtually, right, <laughs> on our social media platforms. So like we always do, we always have a ministry panel every Tuesday. So this Tuesday is the Link Couples Ministry at 7 p.m., as well as Word Impact on Wednesday. You know my thing. We like to, we get fed on Sunday, uh-huh, and we get fed on Wednesday. <laughs> so please join us this uh, Wednesday as the dynamic duo comes together again. Um, Bishop David G. Evans, as well as Pastor Nick at 7 p.m. for Word Impact. So you get some worship and some word. Um, and then on Friday, we have a special, special uh, fresh um, event that we are doing, um, not live, but if you do want to be a part of it, you do have to uh, email us at fresh. Uh, Sister Mai, if we could put the fresh uh, email up there. If you want to be a part of our conversation this Friday, which will be a closed group. Oh, go ahead. Deacon, you're talking no, I was just going to say, Ava, thank you. Uh, class Wednesday was amazing. Oh, was awesome. awesome. Yes. The, the class on Wednesday. Yeah, awesome. We had a good time. We talked about help me Lord. I'm distracted. It was, it was nice. Listen, I need to, I need to be in class with the babies. I, <laughs> I may need that word my, myself. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do want to be a part of our fresh event this Friday, it is not going to be on live, but it's going to be held on Zoom. Um, you can email us at fresh, remember fresh with the number three, um, at go to bethany.com. Okay. And then on Saturday, we have um emerging worship as well as on point radio in the morning uh, with the dynamic duo again. So please make sure you call in, ask your questions about the sermon that you may have or just anything in general. Cause you know, Bishop and Pastor Nick all, they talk about it all. Right. And then Sunday come a full day of uh, streaming with our eight and 11 o'clock um, encounter services, as well as engage in between where you get that, you know, get the game, you get the laughter as well as that incredible, incredible Q and a with Bishop and pastor Nick. And then we had the 10 times better man series in the evening, uh, with a pre and a post to discussion. And then we're back Monday with another, another great, um, streaming of maximize Monday with pastor Nick and sister Maya. And then you can join us back here at five 30 for the recap, um, panel. I always like to ask you where any final thoughts that you had for this, um, this sermon in particular, this past Sunday that we were, you know, we were blessed with. It was good. Go back and watch it. Yeah. Go back and watch it. And luckily for you, it is coming back on at seven tonight. So in about 29 minutes, like I always say, go ahead and get your dinner, sit right in front of, right in front of your computer screen, your TV, wherever you're streaming from. Um, and, you know, 
make sure you uh, watch it and let someone know about um, what we have going on here. But Bethany family, like we always say, it is an honor, it is a blessing to see you guys in the comments, sharing, liking, and you know, just posting your questions in your comments. We love you guys. We thank you. And we look forward to seeing you guys all week in the comments. All right. See you, Bethany family. Be blessed. Bye.